Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So I'm going to talk about how you can maximize your score in the upcoming CSI net exam and you can attempt your exam with 150 plus marks. So that's what this video is going to be all about. I have been talking about this topic in the previous cycle of CSI net exam as well and the points or the tips which I have shared it has helped a lot of students. So I just thought of making it again with some additional points over here so that those who are going to give this exam for the first time or those who have not watched my previous videos it is going to be useful again okay? so that you no, none of you should miss out this and in the upcoming exam your score should be the best uh, of your performance all right so let's talk about that how you can score 150 marks just to give you a brief idea about it in case if you are unaware totally which you should not but still if you are so the paper is of 200 marks but the question paper i mean the exam you you can attempt only of 200 marks but the question paper is of 360 marks uh, because you have a lot of options so that's why you only have to like select of 200 marks okay now it looks technically or on paper very easy that you have uh, like 120 questions so out of those 20, 120 questions you have to do around 75 including part a b and c all of them uh, it looks pretty easy but those who have given this exam they know it's not okay it is very difficult the major challenge comes uh, for especially for CSI net exam is to choose between which question to leave and which question to attempt in the exam that's that's the major uh, yeah, uh, difference of CSI net exam compared to any other because you have choice and you have to make choice making choice is one of the difficult decisions which a human can do so let's break it down okay how you can do this so the idea uh, is to score more than 150 marks the reason for this is if you will attempt the exam of 150 marks because when you sit in the exam you in your assumption or according to you whatever you have attempted all of those questions are correct right and this happens with everyone when you will sit in the exam when you will be giving exam let's say if you have done 150 marks question you will think that i should get 150 because everything whatever i have done i have done it from the best of my knowledge and whatever I have done it's like almost correct and I should get 150 marks but that does not happen it's not the case there will be always a scope for an error and you will get some negative marking out of it so if you score 150 or if you attempt 150 plus then there will be some negative marking and your score will be somewhere around 120 so that's why the first and most important thing is to attempt an exam of higher target uh, it should not bother to you that what category you belong because I have seen this from perspective of a lot of students. I have discussed with them after exam they tell me that uh, uh, I only attempted off 100 marks because I belong like my cutoff does not go that high. Don't, don't keep those things in mind okay. Just keep a single target which is 150 marks. Of course for unreserved category that becomes more crucial but for everyone okay. Just keep 150 marks as your target and believe me it will be very helpful. It's not like you are going to uh, overdo it okay you have to if you are preparing for exam if you are preparing for csi net exam paper is of 360 marks so like doing less than 50 percent of it is not going to be a big deal right so 150 you should be having a target and that's what we are going to tell like we are going to discuss how we can achieve that three sections are there part a b and c first thing is to make a proper strategy like how you are going to attempt the exam okay uh, which portion or which part you are going to do it first there have been different strategies and it should be your own depending upon your test series by the way if you have not given test series it is highly 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 recommended please attempt a test series please attempt some mock tests before your CSI net exam we have our own test series going on you can uh, join that there will be four full length a mock test with detailed solution of the questions uh, you can have total exam like interface over there so and the questions are pretty new so you will be having a good challenge over there so please attempt these mock tests and you will get a lot of idea about how the exam is going to be or what interface the exam is going to be all about coming back to the topic okay so now the thing is that your strategy should be your own which part you are going to do first i personally used to do part a c and then b okay some people just directly go to part c they do part c b and a or some people just start with b and c it depends upon you okay it's up to you the idea is whatever strategy you are making stick to the plan uh, irrespective of the question paper stick to your plan start with your strategy let's assume that i'm i'm taking my example and my strategy which i used to do during my csi net exam 
So I used to attempt part A during the first 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes I used to give to part A. And part A becomes very important when you are aiming 150 plus marks. Okay, because section A can easily, like it has total potential of getting 30 marks, but it can easily give you 10 to 20 marks depending upon how good you are with general aptitude. If you are pretty good, it, good at it, you can score around 20 marks. If you are decent with it, you can still score around 10 to 12 marks from here. If you are not at all good with general aptitude, still you can do two to three questions which can easily give you like six to eight marks in CSI net exam, which is a lot, okay, which can make the difference between net and uh, JRF. So that's why part A becomes very important. Now, let's come back to my strategy. I'll start from part A. Uh, I do first 30 minutes to part A and I try to do as many questions as I can do in part A, okay. The, the, the approach is to do 15 questions, but let's say, whatever questions I'm able to do, I'll do that. Then I'll go to part C. Okay, that's what my strategy is. So I go to part C and then part B. And when I'm attempting the exam, I try to approach it via two round method technique. Okay, I have been talking about it in my previous videos. And this is nothing but going through the question paper in two rounds. Okay, round number one is where I don't try to solve answers. Okay, I don't, don't try to solve question. I go through the question paper. Uh, I let's say I went to part A. I went through each and every question one by one. For 30 minutes, I have given to part A. Let's let's leave that. Okay, 30 minutes are done now. I am left out with two hours and 30 minutes. Now I start with part C. I go through each and every question of part C. And there is an option when you are giving computer based test like CSR net, there is an option to mark for review. Okay, so I use that to mark those questions which are from my areas of interest, let those topics which I have prepared. Let's say I prepared physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry, for example, and I prepared some topics of organic chemistry like stereochemistry, spectroscopy, pericyclic. These are certain things which I prepared. I did not prepare, let's say, uh, reaction mechanism and name reaction that's what I'm telling you a hypothetical situation okay so let's consider me as a student over here so when I will go through the part C I will skip the questions of uh, reaction mechanism and name reaction because that is just going to take a lot of time of me I will not even I'll just read the question once and I, if I understand that okay this is not from the topic which I have studied skip that okay and those questions which are there from my uh, topics which I have studied I will mark them for review in that way, in the side panel, when you see the computer based test, there is a side panel and over there, I will be having questions marked which are there from my topic or the topics which I know. Okay, like this, I will take around like 15 minutes to do or to analyze all the questions of part C. There are 60 questions in part C and that is 15 minutes is enough for that. Okay. And I will also try to give next 10 minutes to part B. I'll do the same thing for part B. So for part C and part B, it is important to do especially and it is crucial for part C okay even for part B you can uh, like ignore this strategy the reason is because out of 40 you have to do 35 so technically you have very less decision making in part B but part C is very crucial where you have to actually make decision and here is the difference here is, is what the difference is going to be created you have to attempt at least 22 23 questions minimum 22 23 questions in part C if you are attempting less than 20 questions in part C, you can never expect more than 110 marks or 100 marks in CSR net. It is never going to happen. Whatsoever part B, like howsoever good you do your part B or part A it does not matter. Doing less than 20 questions in part C is not going to help you. So you have to attempt 22, 23 or even 25 questions in part C. Now, since I have marked uh, like questions in part C and I have not answered any within those 15, 20 minutes. So now I have idea that among those 60 questions, which are the questions which I know. Now I will go to those questions. They have been already marked. I will go to them one by one and now I will start solving them. Okay. And when I will be reading the question, of course, now I will not be having surprise anywhere because now I have idea that what that question, because when you read the question and if you have prepared for exam, you will yourself start having that in mind that from which topic it was, what logic should I apply. These things comes when you read the question itself. So when you are going to the question in the second round and when you are attempting the question in the second round, then your mind is already prepared for that and you won't be having a shock 
uh, like uh, which generally if you if you just go to the next question it comes like a surprise but here because we have already seen all the part c questions we have seen all the 60 questions nothing should come as a surprise to you you are well aware about the question paper you also get to know a gist of that how the question paper is this time whether it is from more of physical chemistry more of organic chemistry whatever it is you will get an idea about it and these all things will boost up your confidence because now your fear of unknown is gone you are not uh, like unaware about the next question what the next question is going to be you already know what the uh, what the questions are you have already read them now this gives a very high chance that you are going to perform well in your second round and now you can choose 25 questions out of those which you have marked and answer them okay so this is going to make sure that you are attempting full uh, uh, like with your full efficiency part c and part c plays the crucial role for bringing you or giving you that elevation in the scorecard okay then of course part b you do your part b with whatever questions or how many questions you are able to do i would recommend you to always try to attend more than 25 questions so if you do let's say 22 uh, questions in part a uh, which is going to uh, fetch you around uh, like 88 marks or 90 marks from part a uh, from part c okay so from part c 90 marks from part b if you have done let's say 25 questions it is going to give you 50 marks you have already attempted 140 marks till now and then from part a if you attempt let's say five or six questions you are like 150 plus okay so this is how you should make your strategy so that you always attempt your question paper more than 150 this is recommended because as i said if you try to attempt less than that it is going to be you will be in the gray region where you will be like dicey between net or jrf and i know that when you sit in the exam it it always gives you a sec like you always get a second thought that whether i should attempt these many questions or not i have already attempted 100 marks i should leave i should not take risk and i should not attempt more questions this happens with many students okay because they keep on counting how many I have done, how many I have done and they count that okay I have done 100 marks uh, let's leave it because 100 is the cutoff if I will do more I might get negative marking but you have to believe this that whatever 100 marks you have done till now you are not going to get all 100 marks okay there will be definitely some silly mistake or something and you are going to get around 80 or 70 marks which is of no use okay you will only get PhD only you will be in that category so you don't have to do that okay so if you are in the exam if you see that you are not able to score or you are not able to do 100 uh, more than 100 try to include all those questions also which you are dicey about there will be some questions in which you are like 50 percent confident 60 percent confident include them also just give it a try okay there are high chances that let's say out of let's say out of five questions if you get two right and three wrong in that case for two right you are going to get eight marks and for three wrong you are going to get minus three so it's still you are plus five right so it's a win-win situation right so try to do that and of course for all these strategy to apply all this strategy the minimum thing which is required is that you have prepared for exam you know the basics you know the concepts and then these things will work okay so i thought of including all these important things in this video i'll try to make few more videos about uh, like how to approach the exam and all the other things do let me know in the comment section if you have some specific question uh, regarding exam preparation and uh, all the best for your preparation again i'm telling please 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 give some mock tests before attempting the final exam before going into the final exam please attempt some mock tests that is going to boost your confidence a lot and you will see the difference when you will be sitting in the exam link to join the mock test is there in the description of this video uh, you can uh, like purchase the mock test and take the benefit of it. So all the best from my side. Take care. Bye-bye.